Hello everyone! In this video, we will be solving equations with fraction using Fraction Buster. So this is the second part. I will put the link of the first part in the description box below. Fraction um, Buster is a method of getting rid of fraction so that we are able to solve the equation. And this method of Fraction Buster is making use of multiplicative property of equality. So let's take this first example right here. So we have 2 over 3x minus 1 half x equals negative 1 6 x minus 3. So the first step that we are going to do is to determine the LCM or the least common multiple. That means we need to figure out a number such that if we divide that number by 3, it's going to come out a whole number. If we divide that number by 2, it will come out a whole number. If we divide that number by 6, that would be a whole number as well. So that number would be 12 because 12 would work for 3, 2, and 6. So that, that number 12 is what we call as the LCM or the least common multiple. So what are we going to do if we get rid of the LCM is to multiply each of these by the LCM. So this one will be multiplied by 12. This will be multiplied by 12. This will be multiplied by 12. This will be multiplied by 12. So then if we multiply, we always remember that others are missing this part. They multiply 12 and 2 and 12 and 3. That is not the way how we do it. We only multiply the 12 and the 2. So this would come out 24. So I'm just going to write that up over here. So that is 24 um, x. I mean, that's 24 over 3 x. Because you have a 12 times 2 is 24. We got a 3. Remember that this one is a denominator. Each of these will have a denominator of one so the 12 will have an invisible denominator of one but we we didn't have to write that because it's one so uh so that if we have 12 times 2 is 24 1 times 3 is 3 and then we do the next one here that is minus that's going to be 12 times 1 is just 12 and then um 1 times 2 would be 2 then we get an x and then that is equal to, we have 12 times 1, that's a negative. So there's a negative in there, that's 12 times 1 is 12 over. That's 1 times 6 is 6, and then we get an x. And then this is minus 12 times 3 is 36. And then from here, we can already uh, simplify the... Um, equation that we got over here because we have a, a 24 divided by 3 would be 8x minus 12 divided by 2 is 6x equals that's negative 2x because you have a 12 divided by 6 is 2 and then there's an x minus 36. At this time, we can already see that uh, both sides of the equation, like the left and the right, we can't see any more fraction on it. And the process that, again, we did was fraction busting. So we get rid of the fraction, so the fractions that we have over here. So from here, we can go ahead and um, do the um, simplify the equation that we have. So we have 8 minus 8x minus 6x would be 2x is equal to negative 2x minus 36. So then from here, we are going to add 2x from both sides. So plus 2x, so we want x by itself. So plus 2x. So we are left with, um, that's going to be negative 36 is equal to 4x. We want x by itself. So we're going to divide both sides by 4. We're going to divide this by 4. So then the final answer that we have for x is negative 9. So I'm just going to write the negative 9 right here. So this is our value for x. Now, how do we know if we got it right? So um, in order that we can determine if our x was correct is to plug the x back into the equation. So we're going to check our work on the side over here to see if uh, both sides of the equation would equal each other. So again, I'm going to use the original equation. So I'm going to put that over here. So that would be um, 2 over 3. And then we put the x that we solved minus, that's going to be 1 over 2, that's the x that we solved, is that equal to the other side of the equation, which is negative 1 over 6, and then the x that we solved minus 3. So then we are going to write the x that we did over here, which is negative 9. And then this is negative 9 right here. So all of this will be negative 9. So then if we um, do the math here, 2 times negative 9 is negative 18. And then that is over 3 
minus, that's gonna be negative, um, this, it becomes a plus now, because we have a negative and a negative, so it becomes a positive. So that would be nine over two. Now others are gonna say like, how did you, wh what happened to the three? Why is it that it, you didn't uh, multiply it to um, nine? So remember, this one is an invisible denominator of one, so three times one is just three. And then this one is an invisible denominator of one, two times one is just two. So we are trying to figure out if that would be equal to the other side of the equation, which is negative and a negative will make it positive. So this would be positive nine over six minus three. So what are we gonna do right now is we are going to um, figure out, we're gonna work on the left side of the equation first to see what would be the answer to this and then work on the right side and see if both sides are equal. So then um, in order that we can have a common denominator for this, we're, uh, gonna, I'm gonna multiply this by two over two and multiply this by three over three. So whatever the denominator of the second, I multiply to the first. Whatever is the denominator of the first, I multiply to the second. So I'm pretty much like multiplying one here. So if we uh, multiply this, this would come out negative 36 over six plus, that's gonna be, um, that's 27 over um, six. Is that equal to the other side? So we're not sure of that yet. So the other side here, we can multiply this by um, six over six so that the denominator would be the same because the denominator here is one. So then we go ahead and um, simplify it. That would be nine over six minus, this is 18 over six. So that is negative 36 minus, um, uh, negative 36 plus 27, and that is a negative um, nine over, six and that is that equal to the other side so nine minus 18 is negative nine over six so then both sides of the equation are equal so that means our x value is correct at this time i would encourage you to pause this video and try this problem out on your own and when you're done and pause it and check your answer Okay, so we go over the problem here. So um, again, first we need to determine what is our LCM. So we get the five, 10, and two. So we need to figure out a number such that if we divide five to that number, it's gonna be a whole number. If we divide 10 to that number, it's gonna be a whole number. And if we divide two to that number, it would be a whole number. So in this problem that we have here, the LCM is 10. So 10 can be divided by five, can be divided by 10, and can be divided by two, and it gives a whole number. So I'm gonna multiply 10 to each of these. So I'll multiply this by 10, and then multiply this by 10. So multiply this by 10. So then we are going to um, simplify this. Again, be sure that we only multiply the 10 and the 3x, because others are multiplying 10 and five. So it's only oh, 10 and 3x. No. So this would come out, I'm gonna show the work over here. So this is 30x over five. So you get the five minus, that's gonna be 10x over 10. Because you have a, a 10 times x is 10x and that's over 10. And that is equal to 10x minus, it's gonna be 50 over, that's over two, 50 over two. So then from here, we go ahead and simplify this. 30 divided by five is six. So we got a six x minus one x. So I can just write x and that is equal to 10x minus, that's gonna be 25. So you, you can see at this time we, we have gotten rid of the fraction. Okay, so what are we gonna do now is we combine like terms. So 6x minus 1x is just 5x and that is equal to 10x minus 25. We want x by itself, so we're gonna subtract 10x from both sides minus 10x here. So then we go ahead and cross the um, 10x out, so we're left with negative 5x is equal to negative 25. So then we want x by itself, so divide both sides by negative 5, divided by negative 5, so then our x is a positive 5. Okay, so this is our value for x. Again, uh, one way to check if we got it right is to plug the value for x that we got into the original equation. So we're gonna check that over here to see if our x was correct. So both sides of the equation should be equal to each other. So in this case here, we're using only the original equation. So that would be three, and then I will put the x that we solved over five 
minus, I will put the x that we solved over 10. Is that equal to the other side? I will put the x that we solved minus 5 over 2. Again, the x that we solved here was 5, so I'll put the 5 into the parentheses. So that's 5 right there. So then I'll do the uh, arithmetic on this, so that would be 15. So that's 15 over um, 5 minus 5 over 10. Is that equal to 5 minus 5 over 2? So we want the denominator to be, to be uh, common to both of these fractions here. So I can multiply this by 2 over 2. And then, so then from here, I can go ahead and simplify the left side. So this would come out um, 2 times 15 is 30 over um, 10 minus 5 over 10. So then 30 minus 5 is 25 over 10. I can reduce this to uh, 5 over or 5 halves. So this can be reduced to 5 halves. So the left side is 5 halves. Now let's see what's on the uh, right side. To do that, we are going to simplify this um, side right here. So since the denominator here is 2, so I'm going to multiply this first one with 2 over 2 to make um, to make all the denominators the same. So this would come out 10 over 2. So it's still a question mark. We don't know if they're equal to each other. And then that's a minus 5 over 2. So then this would come out uh, 10 minus 5 is 5 and then common denominator of 2. So then both sides of the equation are equal. That's 5 over 2. Did you get the same answer as this? Good. Perfect. If you find this video helpful, hit like and subscribe for more math videos. See ya.